Greetings, book lovers everywhere. I'm E Train, and welcome back to E Train Talks, where I discuss all things books in the hopes of inspiring others to, well, love reading as much as I do. And I'm on a mission to spread some kindness along the way, too. So today, I'm thrilled to be joined all the way from Australia by Kate Foster, the award winning author of two incredibly meaningful and downright amazing middle grade novels, Pause and The Bravest Word. They deal with topics like depression, anxiety, as well as friendship and acceptance. I read Kate's novel, The Bravest Word, and I'm not lying when I say I inhaled this incredibly moving story in one sitting. It's a book you just can't put down. A gripping story about an 11-year-old boy suffering in silence and the unexpected friendship he makes with Cliff, an abused pup. I absolutely love The Bravest Word, and the story takes you on an emotional journey that leaves a mark on your heart and helps you open your eyes to what it feels like to be lost and alone. But also finding people that understand you and are here to help. It's just an emotional roller coaster. And I, for one, highly recommend it to all of you. And also Pause, which I haven't read yet and I need to, is another great book, so I've heard. And it deals with a boy and a dog, just like The Bravest Word, and you already know when there's a dog involved, it's going to be the sweetest book ever. So now without further delay, I'm so excited to welcome the wonderful Kate Foster to E-Train Talks. Thanks for joining me today, Kate. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure to talk to you as well. And I'm sure everybody listening wants to know about you and your book journey and how you got involved in the middle grade writing industry. And speaking of, what compels you to write for the middle grade audience? Um, I don't know um, quite if there's one simple answer to this, um, but I think um, middle grade is the best, like seriously, like kids of that eight to 12 bracket are just the best. You know, you're learning about the world, but you're also kind of finding your own feet, um, but you still need your family and your friends and all those things around you. Um, and also, I think like that was probably the best time of my life. So I think perhaps I'm part of me is stuck <laughs> back in those years, many, many, many years ago, um, where it was just brilliant and life was exciting. And um, I just wanted to learn about all the different things and read about all the different people around the world. So, yeah, I think that's that's probably the shortest answer I can give. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that makes a lot of sense. I know that I, I'm compelled to read middle grade because of authors like you who just indulge in genres like realistic fiction, just downright, um, like there's no word for it, like just books that make my heart sing. And oh, books, that's like, perfect. <laughs> books like The Bravest Word, really make my heart just feel warm and I can like the characters you just want to cry for them like in a good way like happy tears like when they find when they find the answer um but also sad tears when some light doesn't go their way you really relate to the characters and that's how I felt with Matt in The Bravest Word and I know that I'll feel that with your protagonist in Pause as well so now well, I hope so yeah thank you <laughs> I know so and in both your novels, Pause and The Bravest Word, dogs are important to, to the characters in your stories. I happen to read that you're a dog lover, so it makes sense that you try to incorporate pups in your stories. But can you share what it is about dogs that inspired you to make them such important characters in your storylines? And do you see yourself including any other types of furry friends in your stories? Or are you kind of sticking to just puppies only? <laughs> uh, well, dogs have been a massive feature of my whole life. Um, when I was young, um, I just wanted a dog more than anything in the world. And then when I eventually got one, I think I was about six. Um, and he was just my bestest friend in, in the world. Um, it didn't, I know, the thing with dogs is it doesn't matter what mood you're in. It doesn't matter what's going on in your world. They want to be with you. They want to be your friends. They want to care for you and look after you. And, um, and I just think that innocence and that purity is something that really we could all learn from. You know, when you watch dogs interact and they play with each other, that you know that it's just um there's no kind of judgment really it's just you know are you going to play well let's play you know and I, and I think that's just such an admirable quality and um as for writing other animals I mean never say never that's my um my verdict on that one um I love all animals I'm a big big nature lover so very possibly very possibly there will be a book one day which has got 
all sorts of different animals in it. So yeah, fingers crossed on that one. Definitely. And I'm excited to see where your writing journey takes you. Maybe you'll write about a cat or maybe you'll write about a horse or maybe who knows, you might write about a parrot in South America. Well, absolutely. Over here in Australia, we have the most glorious, um, unique wildlife. So who knows? I could write about a quokka or a koala or anything, really. So, yeah, yeah. I, will, I will look into that for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell from your glorious bookshelf that you have that you have a lot of books to look through and maybe you'll find some inspiration for some new books because I am always, always just so inspired by writers like you and I want to read more of your books like a hundred percent if I see pause or the bravest if I see a book with Kate Foster well you Kate Foster maybe there's another Kate Foster but you Kate <laughs> I Foster <laughs> um I will just run to that book I will order it or like at a local bookstore, maybe go to the library. And I'm just going to, once I read it, I'm going to hug it for the rest of the day. So I'm always interested to know, do you have any other book projects in the works? Well, thank you for those amazing words. I don't think um, any author could say there's better words that they could hear. So thank you very much. Um, and there are always new books when, <laughs> when there's me, I'm always writing new things. So I hope that, yeah, this kind of this journey continues for quite a lot longer. But next year over here in Australia, I actually have three books coming out. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's very going to be a very busy year. I'm not quite sure what to expect at the moment about how I'm going to juggle everything. But I have a couple more middle grades coming next year. Uh, one of them is about a group of autistic children who are um, attending weekly socialization classes and during those classes they um, none of them really want to be there it's like this is so boring um but while they're there a mystery begins to unfold mm. and so they have to kind of join forces find each other's strengths and um eventually do this incredibly daring rescue um the other middle grade i have i've actually co-authored with an, with an amazing aussie author kate gordon and this really is just um, a, a book which celebrates kindness and reaching out and then the other book i have which is for the younger reader uh, is a harriet hound um, and she is a superhero um, her, yes, I know. And, and I bet you can't guess what her magical superhero powers are. I mean, it involves something with fur and four legs and hmm. yeah, I know, right? Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm very, very excited. And I'm hoping one day that those books all come and hit the, the shelves over in the US. Fingers crossed. I hope so, because a lot of people tuning in are in the U.S. and Canada, and we all want to see Kate Foster's books on the shelves. So we're going to just be on your social media, on your website, waiting for some news about, hey, maybe Paws is in the U.S. Huh? Oh, my gosh, The Bravest Word is in the U.S. We're going to be just um, stalking your website and <laughs> looking for any information we can find, because everybody... Kate Foster's novels, they're, I, I, I'm not going to say out of this world because that's not really like, a I want to use a term that's related to the book. So let me think for a sec. Um, they're, well, yeah, they're extraordinary. I've got to say. That's, a, that's the perfect word, again, that an author can hear. So thank you so much. I'm so pleased that they, um, yeah, I'm just pleased that they're making a difference to people's lives. Yeah. And they really resonate with me and a lot of other readers. So speaking of, in your novels, Pause and The Bravest Word, your protagonists are neurodivergent. One is autistic and the other has pretty bad anxiety. So what motivated you to write middle grade stories about neurodivergent kids? Um, well, it's such an enormous um, topic. So many things come under the umbrella of neurodivergency, and it's something that I, I share. Um, I'm autistic and I have um, some mental health issues. I have anxiety and um, I, have, I have depression. So for me, it's important um, to write about these topics openly, warmly, sensitively, and obviously authentically, um, because there are so many people out there that have 
you know, the same kind of everyday struggles, but we need to see ourselves um, in books. We need to be able to relate and we need to be able to say, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty normal actually. Um, you know, this is, this is me, this is how I am. Um, and yeah, so I think putting that kind of authentic representation in my books is, is incredibly important. Um, just not just for neurodivergent kids and people, but also for everyone. So everyone can learn a little bit more um, and kind of deep dive into our minds minds and our lives and and make that connection um, and build that empathy so it's something I love to do when I was a kid and still now I love to read books which are about different people with yeah. different points of views so yeah that that's um that's why I want to represent those children and those people around the world yeah it's so important to write about books write books about kids that are different from um a, the a major like a wide majority of kids like especially as middle graders, we need to see others, like we need to accept others. And when, like for a long time, for starters, there wasn't a middle grade genre until maybe the Harry Potter books came out. Um, and even and like, it hasn't been until really now in the past few years that there have been, a, there's been a wide variety of books about neurodivergent kids. And now we're, we're like, wow, this resonates with me. I have a kid, maybe you were mean to a kid who maybe had autism. And now after reading The Bravest Word or pause, like, wow, I was mean to this kid. I didn't know what they were going through, but now I do. And I, I need to apologize. I need to be for them, be there for them. So yeah. that, I just think it's, it's so inspiring, not only your stories, but also that they're directed at middle grade because um, sorry to all the adults out there, but you, it's sometimes adults are a lot less accepting than kids and you need to learn about these ideal ideas and different kinds of people when you're young, so you can really learn to accept them at, when you're an adult. So I'm just so grateful and so many others are grateful for your stories, Kate. Oh, that's brilliant. That's that's the, a good, you kind of summed it up there. You know, it's so important to learn because we can't look at everybody and understand what's going on. We don't know what's going on. And even just outside of any kind of disabilities, lots of people have stuff going on in their lives at home with their families and friends. And so we can't look at them and judge. You know, we have to take a step back and try and try and learn a little bit more. So, yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah. So my next question is, well, it's also a statement at the beginning. I absolutely love your books. And after reading your newest novel, The Bravest Word, an amazing and very fitting title, by the way, I found myself wanting to read more of your heartwarming stories. And I hear so many different backstories from authors I've talked with. And many authors weren't avid readers as kids. And then there are those lifelong bookworms, like I hope to be. So, um, while I love reading your stories that you write for kids, I also want to hear your story. Will you share, were you like a book, always a bookworm? Were you kind of a reluctant reader? And what's one fun fact about yourself that people might not know? Okay, good question. Um, well, yes, I've always been a book lover since I was teeny tiny, um, always reading, um, always um, like just not always reading necessarily, but always had books around me. Yeah. I just loved the comfort, just like I do now. I love the comfort of having books around me. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of a, a nice, relaxing um, addition <laughs> to the home. Um, so, yes, I've always been a reader and always a writer, actually. I was writing books as, as young as kind of five I think I mean I call them books but they you know they had like two pages but they counted as books yeah. um so yeah I think there were always times of my life when perhaps I didn't read as much um and that's okay you know like but I always found books again and um and sometimes you just kind of need that one book to come along which which reads kind of sparks your love of stories and so, yeah, I, I think um, for my, my story definitely is that I've always, always been a reader. Um, but as for a fun fact, I find this really tricky because um, I'm not I, I'm like sometimes I'm, I've met lots of amazing people over the years who have these incredible stories to tell. Like a good friend I met last week, Nat Amor, she used to be in the trapeze. She was a trapeze artist. And I'm like, wow. Um, and then another guy I met, Oliver Pomervan, he was like, um, he's a stand up comedian and he was breaking world records with Xbox. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, I don't have any of those stories. Um, so I don't really know what is a super exciting, fun 
one thing to share about me, but I do have a dream that one day I can move into the mountains and open and start a rescue shelter for dogs. Um, I'd love to have um, particularly elderly dogs um, whose owners have perhaps passed away or um, they're in the shelter and no one wants them because they're a bit older and I want them to come to my shelter so I can let them retire in peace and happiness and comfort. So yeah, maybe that's the, a fun fact about me. There are so many beautiful themes and messages interwoven into your books. Will you share one meaningful or just any message that you hope your readers, readers will take away from your novels? Ah, yeah, you're right. There are so many messages. And one of the beautiful things I think about reading is that it's a personal experience. Everybody takes what they need from a book at a certain time of their life. So I kind of leave messages open for whomever is reading and whatever they want to learn from it. But I think for me, it's always, um, you know, that we just need to step back before we before we speak, sometimes we just need to consider what somebody else is living through, what their situations are at home, um, and just just approach everything with with kindness um, and patience. So I think, yeah, that's probably my my message. I hope everybody will take from my books. And was there someone who inspired you to pursue writing? A parent, teacher, author, or role model? Um, I think probably a little bit of everyone that I've encountered over the years. Um, I think I've always liked writing anyway it was kind of perhaps yeah. I don't know if I'd say I was born to write but I think it was just something that I did because I enjoyed it it was like a nice comforting exercise mm -hmm. and it still is really um, but I think yeah all the people I've met over the years they kind of add little snippets to the stories that you want to tell you know I'm all, I've always been quite fascinated by people maybe because I found it difficult to to make close connections with people so I've always been kind of fascinated with how people live and and um why they make the choices they do so um yeah but I would say probably um pursuing it as a potential career didn't really start until I had children I think children of my own um was probably the biggest push and inspiration to to be um to do more with my writing um because children are just incredibly inspiring um, like you say, you know, adults sometimes are less accepting, they stop asking questions, they stop being willing to make mistakes. Um, and children don't aren't like that. Children are beautiful. And they just they just kind of push on through. And, yeah. um, and I think it's really admirable. So yeah, kids, kids are the best. <laughs> and if you were trapped on a deserted island, and now this is a really tough question. If you're trapped mm. on a deserted island, and you can only bring one book. What book would it be? And why? Yeah, that is a, it's a tough question. And actually, um, I'm going to be honest, it's cruel. It's really cruel. How can you expect me to pick one <laughs> book? Yeah. I do not know. Um, I don't know how to answer it without feeling really guilty about all the other books that I can't bring. Um, so, yeah, there's, a, there's quite a few books which over the years I've just loved and always gone back to. So I think if I was on this island for the rest of my life, and I was never going to leave it. So I needed just one book. It would probably be Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe. Yes, by it's so good. Yeah, and I, because I think it's just one of those books which I remember reading for the first time. And I remember reading again and again and again. I remember trying to get through the back of the wardrobe. I think it was that book which really kick-started um, my imagination. Um, probably so I would I'd have to go for that one uh, I'm sorry all the other books that I can't take and haven't picked today <laughs> you know I really love your bookshelf by the way I've got to say it looks like color-coded and everything it looks really cool yeah I spend a lot of time um, on my books because um, I like I just like being around my books I think yeah. I've said that a few times now haven't I <laughs> But yeah, uh, like each time it rains true. It's it's so true. Being around books is the best feeling. Like imagine a life without books. And luckily we don't have to be on a deserted island with only one book. No. And if we were forced <laughs> on a deserted island, I would I don't know, I would get one of those like bodybuilding pills and I would carry this whole bookshelf <laughs> to the deserted island. Oh, that's a smart move. I like it. Yeah. Although I don't so know if those pills it. work but well no yeah. probably not but um but if you did have to take one book what would be your choice that's a good question my yeah. choice would have to be um starfish by lisa phipps ah I, good choice i'm sorry to all the other books as well um <laughs> i just feel like starfish is 
like any novel in verse there's there are so many like hidden details as well as graphic novels like a book like new kid i would want to take uh, as well like just there are so many hidden like themes messages and i just love the character ellie and lisa phipps is amazing she is truly an inspiration i got to interview her a couple days ago so that was fun oh, wow lucky you yeah um so luckily i don't have to make that decision um yeah. <laughs> unless it's yeah. like the end of the world as we know it but hopefully if if doomsday does come i can i have some time to prepare so i can just pack like two suitcases full of books or three or four or That's five it. Maybe, maybe it should be the emergency bag by the door yeah we all have one which we just pop our favorite books into so yeah um you know forget clothes yeah brushes just the books thank you <laughs> yeah i can use the palm trees as clothes exactly we can use nature to, mm-hmm. to all our other needs <laughs> as now i i'm yeah i know that i'm bombarding you with really tough questions but i have to just ask this one because i ask every single one of my guests if you could be or meet any literary character fictional or real who would it be and why oh and this is an yeah this is another really cruel question and um I don't how do the other authors cope with this these questions that you ask them do they get cross with you like I am they don't get <laughs> cross they I think they're jokingly cross but they all have a little bit of trouble so you're not you're you're not the only one okay good so um I think and I have given this some thought that I would probably um be do you have you ever read the worst witch series by Jill Murphy I haven't Okay, so this was um, a, oh, a very old book that I loved. It was a whole series of books. It ended up being a TV show. Um, so I would probably um, want to meet Mildred Hubble. She was the um, main character in these stories. She it, it was um, she was the worst witch, basically. She went to Miss Cackle's Academy. Um, so I'd probably want to, to meet her um, if I could, if I could choose um, one person from all of the books that I've read over the years I think that Mildred Hubble would be would be my favorite because I had a huge connection with her when I was when I was growing up we'll have to look into that book series and unfortunately that's all we have that's all the questions um Kate thank you so much for sharing such thoughtful answers I'm sure everyone listening is so inspired by your contributions to literacy and we all want to see you have a dog shelter on the mountain someday (laughs) we hope you'll invite us And just thank you for shining a light on such important messages, messages that so many middle schoolers can relate to, as well as people of all ages, I'm sure. I mean, that's what's great about that's what's great about middle grade. Anybody can relate to the stories, whether you're an adult looking back on their middle grade years and like, oh, I miss this time. I want to read more middle grade books or you're a middle grader right now. And you're like, okay, there are people like me. It's good to see just middle grade can appeal to a wide audience. That's what I love about it. Oh, I agree. I feel like your books, they don't just, like, it's not just, oh, the storylines appeal, but also the characters, like, because we, whether you're two or you're 50, we can all have anxiety at times or depression, and finding characters like Matt, it just warms my heart, and it warms so many other people's hearts, because, wow, there's a kid, there are people like me, and that's just the best feeling finding somebody that you can relate to and it feels like you're so alone in this world yeah yeah absolutely you're right it is a huge world and there's everybody's so busy everyone's got their lives so sometimes yeah I think you know if we can't necessarily find someone to connect to in our kind of real words or world or our initial um, immediate family and friends books books provide that that um, window and that connection that we need so yeah I agree with you so thank you thank you very much for having me I have loved chatting with you I've loved it as well I hope we can do this again sometime when maybe when your new books come out I hope that I can receive a copy all the way from Australia and so many others do as well to all of you listening Be sure to get your hands on copies of Kate's two amazing middle grade books. Even if you're in the U.S., maybe you can contact Kate, go to her Twitter account at kfosterauthor, and also go to her website, kfosterbooks.com, for more information. And you need to read Pause and The Bravest Word. You will not regret it. And as always, stay safe, keep reading, and remember, there's always a book out there for you. And there are always characters that 
are going through the same experiences as you. Always remember that. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one.